So this sequence of steps is finite. There are only two steps. But once again, step two is complex. Now, unlike algorithm one, here we are checking every integer x from n plus 1 all the way to infinity. For every such integer x, we are checking if x is a prime number. How do we check if x is a prime number? Is that a basic operation? Well, we have just seen an algorithm to check if an integer is a prime number. So, this is not a basic step, but we know it can be decomposed into a series of basic steps. So this is a very, very powerful idea in computing. If somebody gives us a very complicated task, we might be able to solve it by breaking up this complex task into simpler subtasks for which we do know how to create an algorithm. And maybe by combining or stitching together these algorithms, we might be able to get an algorithm for the more complex problem. So we can check if this x is a prime. And then if it is, we can print x and stop. But what if x is not a prime? Well, then we have to check the next integer. So we will start with n plus 1. If that is not a prime, we will try n plus 2, n plus 3, n plus 4. And of course, our concern is this sequence of steps may not be finite. This process could go on forever. But of course, I'm sure many of you know that this process will not go on forever. Eventually, we will find an x that is a prime number. How can we be so sure? Because as many of you know, the prime numbers are infinite. So no matter what n I give you as a starting integer, as you scan n plus 1, n plus 2, and so on, eventually you will find an x that is an integer. And then you will print that x and stop. So I'm sure with that understanding, you can now understand what this algorithm is trying to do. It's simply trying to find the, la the smallest prime number that is bigger than a given integer n. 